Hello and welcome. My name is Addie and I'm the yarn dyer behind Ruby and Rose's Yarn. And in this video today, I am going to be addressing the topic of what to make with indie dyed yarn. Whether you are new to the indie dyeing world and you would love to purchase some of this yarn but have no idea what to make with it, then stick around because I'm going to be sharing over 15 patterns that some are knit, some are crochet, ranging anywhere from speckled yarns to tonal yarn recommendations to mini skeins. It's going to be a jam packed video today and I cannot wait to start. But first of all, I also wanted to mention that all of the yarn that is going to be shown in the yarn recommendations portion of the video launched today. It is part of my new favorites collection. So all of these colorways that are behind me are now available to purchase. I will have links down below to not only the yarn I'm going to be showing, but also the patterns that I'm going to be recommending as well as, um, yeah, all the timestamps. So whether you're here for the knitting content or the crochet content or mini skeins, then you can click down below to whatever avenue you want to check out. So yeah, it's going to be such a fun episode and I also uh, think this would be great if you are currently in like a knitting and crochet slump. If you just want some new inspiration, something, if you're looking for like a new cast on, then maybe one of these will be it. So yeah, let's get started. The first pattern that I'm going to be recommending is the Sockhead Slouch Hat. It's been around for quite some time, but I feel like it's just a classic pattern. I would love to see what it would look like in my apple cider colorway because I feel like this is such a perfect pa color palette for the transitional time between fall and winter where I feel like the slash head hat is just perfect for. So this is my apple cider colorway on soft rose and I think this would make an amazing hat. The next one is also a one skein project and it is the Vanilla Sock by Crazy Sock Lady. She has such fun sock patterns and I think that any one of them would be great in my Deluminator colorway. As you can see, it's dyed in more of a striped effect and this just knits up in such a fun way when it's like has a small circumference. So I feel like socks would be beautiful in my Deluminator colorway and this is also just super fun. Speaking of the Vanilla Sock by the Crazy Sock Lady, I wanted to show you the three sock sets that also launched in this shop update if you are interested in knitting this pattern but hoped to have a coordinating mini along with the 100 gram full skein. This is the first Frost sock set. It is so, so fun for summer. I love how it looks with my playful um, colorway as the coordinating mini. I think this would just be super fun in a summer pair of socks. If you want something that's a bit more neutral, we of course have my Butterbeer sock set. It features my Butterbeer colorway along with my Lucky Penny tonal. I think this would be such a fun, um, very like fall inspired pair of socks. And then the last colorway is my Bundle Up colorway. It is also available in full skein form, but the sock set of this colorway is so fun and this is one of my favorite colorways. The tonal that is paired with this colorway is my conifer tonal, which is very similar to my first frost green. It's just a slightly darker hue, but it has so many fun speckles and this is just one of my favorite sock sets. And that is the sock sets that launched in this update. So many sock possibilities. The next project I'm going to be showing is the Vertices Unite Shawl by Stephen West. I think this shawl could not be any more beautiful and I know it's such a huge undertaking, but I feel like the projects that last the longest can also be the ones that are extremely special. So this is the palette of five colorways that I have collected. You would need a total of one skein of each for this shawl on whatever size you choose to knit. So this is my dragonfly colorway. This is my headspace colorway on soft rose. The speckles are just so fun in this skein. So we have dragonfly, headspace, unbreakable vow, which is super dark and moody. Just lots of color depth in this skein, as well as my pensive colorway, which is super fun because of all of the bright speckles, but it's also really light and just super fun. So we have Pensive, and then last but not least, we have Whispering Pines. It is just a really foresty green with a lot of different color speckles in it. So many, so many colors in that one. So yeah, I think this palette of five colors would work beautifully in that make. 
This next one is the Anchor Summer Shirt by Petite Knit. I think either one of these tonals would look beautiful in this project. You would just need a total of one colorway and the amount of skeins you would need would vary depending on the size that you choose. But this is my Lucky Penny tonal and it is super rich. So if you are forever an earth tones lover and really love the more dark saturated tones, then I think this one would be perfect. But if you are wanting to stick to more of spring and summer colors, then I think Glacier would be beautiful. It's such a beautiful Norwegian blue that's just very delicate and just a super fun periwinkle. And then last but not least, in the tonal section, we have my petal colorway, which is very soft, delicate, super feminine. And I also think it would look beautiful in this design. Although if you were hoping to use a colorway that had some speckling action happening, then I think my Lucy colorway would be pure perfection made in this design. It has so many really fun speckles in it. And as you can see, the colors play together so well. It just has this fiery orange base that showcases these pops of color beautifully in my opinion. However, the pattern does not call for this uh, fingering weight base that I'm holding right now. It calls for DK weight. So this is my Rose DK base, which would be perfect perfect for this design and this is what the colorway looks like on DK. So as you can see it's slightly different just because the base is a bit different and yeah it would need you would need however many skeins it says for your size. If you have trouble calculating out how many skeins you think you need then feel free to shoot me an email and I will be happy to help you calculate that and walk you uh, walk you through that process. Next up, we have a, another shawl pattern. This is the Road Trip Shawl by Kemper Ray, and I think my Eye in the Mirror colorway and Victorian would look gorgeous in this design. This is a project I would love to cast on if only I had the time because this pattern I've personally made in the past and it's so much fun. It's just such an addicting knit. So here's Victorian. As you can see, there's so many depths, just so much depth of color in this skein. There's also some really fun black speckles along with some pops of orange and red and lots of purple tones. And then my Eye in the Mirror colorway is just so many speckles on this beautiful silvery gray neutral base. I love getting to have so many pops of color on just a really simple neutral. I feel like it just is the funnest thing to work with because you are constantly being surprised by color pops on your needle or your hook. So here we have Eye in the Mirror and Victorian. Next up is the Tegna by Caitlin Hunter. Again, this is a pattern that has been around for so long, but some of you might have not heard of it. It's a really beautiful knit that I've actually had a sample knitter make for me, and it's beautiful. I love it so much. This is my first frost colorway. I think this would make a beautiful Tegna if you wanted something that was a lot more summery, just lots of pops of color, and just a super... Um, a super delicate green along with lots of, like I said, bright pops. Or if you want to go completely neutral, then I would recommend using my journal colorway. It is just extremely simplistic, which I feel like makes lace really shine. It has these pops of blue as well as a touch of yellow and that delicate pink that are here ever so often, but primarily it's this almost royal blue speckle and black along with a light gray silvery base. So this is journal. And like I said, I think either one of these would work beautifully in this design. The camisole number five is just the epitome of spring. I would love to knit it in my Galavant colorway. I feel like that would just uh, keep the integrity of the design so well and the um, ton tonality of the skein would really suit the um, slight texture on the design. I feel like that would be super fun and if Galavant isn't quite your style, you're hoping for something a little bit brighter, then I would recommend my retro colorway. It is a really delicate yellow. I just love how, um, how soft it is and how it's also just really fun and summery at the same time. So I think either one of these tonals would be a great choice for that design. But not only do I think that that pattern would look great in tonal colorways, I also think it would be beautiful in my summer wind colorway. It is just 100 grams of pure speckled goodness. I love the base. It is this like neon blue that I custom blend at the studio and it's just super beautiful. So this is a brand new colorway that is just in the shop right now. I also have it available in sock set form, but needless to say, I think this would also make a beautiful camisole number five. 
Last but not least for the knitwear pattern recommendations is Befree Your Fade by Andrea Mowry. I had so much fun knitting her Find Your Fade a few years ago and I am sure this pattern would be just as lovely to knit up. I have two options because I just couldn't pick and so I decided to show them both. Here we have my uh, pensive colorway summer wind and victorian i think this would be so fun if you really love the blues and purples and just the really um cool colors then i think this would be perfect and then option number two is my eye in the mirror colorway whispering pines and unbreakable vow i think this would be such a fun fun green palette along with this neutral pop i think that would be super fun so like i said no matter what your color preference i hope this one will um, fit the bill for you so here is both options i hope you enjoyed seeing all of my personal favorite knitting patterns that i would currently make with all of these yarns if i only had the time but i am going to be sharing all of my crochet pattern recommendations next and i just wanted to remind you all again that if you loved a pattern that i showed and you loved the colorway that i was uh, debuting with it then check the links out down below because i have all the colorways all the patterns linked and yeah let's start with crochet i found some really really fun patterns with this one so i can't wait to start showing you the first pattern that I will be featuring in the crochet segment is the Mellow Tunic. Again, this is a pattern where I couldn't decide which combo to show, so I decided to show all three of them. And first up, we have my Kana colorway, Quill, and Demure. I think this would just be such a really fun sweater because it features so many different pink tones and just such a fun, fun uh, combo. Calls for worsted weight, and this is my rose worsted base. As you can see, it is super, super plump and squishy, and I wanted to feature it because it just, I feel like it just doesn't get enough love because it's such a thick weight, but I personally adore this base. It's 100% superwash merino and 219 yards of pure squishiness. So we have Kana, like I said, and Quill and Demure. Next up, we have Sangria, which is just this extremely rich, vibrant purple. I love it to death. And then we have Golden Hour, which just has neon yellow undertones, and it's just over dyed with this really dark brown, which gives it such an electric look. And then we have my Candlewick colorway, which is just a really light mauve with a lot of gray undertones. So I just love pairing this with my Golden Hour colorway because I think it just gives it such a beautiful effect. So this is my personal favorite combo out of the out of the three, but again, that is just personal preference. And last but not least, we have my Twilight colorway, which has been sold out for so long. This is another one of those classic tonals that I offer, and it is restocked on all the bases. We have Twilight, we have Radioactive Rain, which is so, so bright. It is just like... Um, really hard to capture because of its brightness, but be sure to look at the listing photos because that will give an accurate description of what the colorway looks like in real life. And my mirror colorway, which is just a rich gray that's just super fun. So these are the, these are the three options. Again, a three option trio. First up we have Grinch and Butterbeer. So this sweater as you can see is a fade. It features a tonal colorway and a speckled colorway both on fingering weight. So I think that Grinch and Butterbeer would be super fun because it's one of those duos that almost is an op like an illusion because it makes this colorway look so much more green than if it was just by itself. And I love love doing this effect because it can almost just shift the colors um, in a way that it wouldn't be able to if it was by itself. So I think these would be super, super fun and you can always pair it with my golden hour if you want a colorway that's a little more obvious and won't have um, a big striped effect. Second option, we have my journal colorway and pensive. I think these would be super fun because they're just slightly different in the fact that this one, they both have um, blue undertones, but this one is obviously more gray, and then this one is blue with a lot of color in it. So I think this would be super fun to sort of blend in these two speckled colorways. And then if you want a more subtle tonal speckled pairing, then I would recommend my cloud gazing colorway and headspace. Cloud gazing is this extremely subtle blue 
two-toned silver gray. It is, uh, it has a lot of cream undertones to it. As you can see, it also has just a, different shades of blue and a few different gray, uh, different grays blended together. And this is my most popular tonal, like of all time. And I can easily see why, because it's just so just like mesmerizing because it just looks like such beautiful strands of silver in my mind. So this is cloud gazing with headspace, like I said. So I think this would also be a really fun pairing. The Bleray Shawl would be perfect in my Spectro Specs colorway. This again is a colorway that almost has a more striped effect to the dye style. And I think that this style in particular crochets up beautifully. I've seen some of you posted on Instagram, so you could definitely go look through my tagged post if you want to see what this colorway does look like crocheted up, but it just is so beautiful. And this is also just a great summery colorway. I think it's super fun because it's so bright and it's just this electric pink purple base with so many different colors in it. So this is Spectra Specs and I think it would be beautiful in this pattern. The summertime tank features a DK weight yarn and I have selected the Prince's Tail. It is a beautiful speckled colorway that has a super dark base, but just a lot of fun pops of color. I think this is um, this would be amazing on your hook because it would be a constant surprise on what color it would be coming up next. That was my rose DK base and this is what it looks like on my soft rose base. So as you can see, it just takes up dye slightly different on the different bases, but it's all the same colorway. So this would also be a super fun spring project. Last but not least is mini sets. These are going to be uh, two knit patterns and a crochet pattern in there for all of the minis collections that I have in the shop. There are so many available and I feel like the possibilities are endless no matter what your color palette is. If you are, yeah, if you have a specific color palette in mind, odds are there's one that is going to match it in the shop. I have a total of two mini sets that launched in this collection. So they are both in the shop and they basically feature all of these speckled colorways from the entire collection. And I have organized them into two different color palettes. As you can see, we have one that's much more purple tones along with that um, really fun pop that Lucy brings, which is that fun orange. And then we have one that's just filled with so many different greens. And I've never done a mini set that looks like this before. And I have to say, I'm obsessed with the effect. So the first crochet mini set pattern that I have um, decided to share with you guys is the Juniper Cal. I think this would be so fun. It's a crochet pattern and I just really love the way that this would, that I can just imagine what it would look like knit with this set. So there's just so many different colors and you can also arrange the set in a fade if you want, or you can keep it to where it's like almost a striped effect. It's totally up to you. And I think it would be really fun to have some creative freedom with this project and just all the projects in general. As for this set, I think it would make a super fun pair of sprocket socks. I've never really knit socks before, although I have plans for one, but this just looks like such a cute pair of socks and I think it would be a super fun and inventive way to use a mini skate. But if you want to incorporate a project that uses both mini sets, then I would recommend the zigzag scarf or the habitation throw. Both of these I'm not going to be showing a picture of, but they will be linked down below if you want to check out the pattern individually. The Habitation Throw is a beautiful knit blanket that uses 24 mini skeins, so you would need a few more minis. And I will go ahead and kind of show you a little sneak peek of the wall that's just a bit of a teaser of all the different mini sets that I have available in the shop. So that's the Habitation Throw. The Zigzag Scarf is a beautiful scrappy project that features a ton of minis. So again, these will not be enough for such a large, um, a, such a large project, but again, I have so many in the shop so you can curate your own color palette, which I feel like is one of the fun things about being a creator is getting to choose your colors and choose what palette and what vibe you're going for. And that's a wrap. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, then please like and subscribe down below because this will help me gain more exposure on YouTube and get this video to as many people as possible. So hopefully they will be just as inspired as you are. I had a lot of fun filming it and I cannot wait to see all the projects that are going to be cast on with these colorways along with what patterns you choose. It's just going to be so exciting to watch. So 
Thanks again for watching and I hope you have an amazing day. Stay tuned for next Sunday's episode where I'm going to be sharing a new project that, or an old project that just got cast off. And I can't wait to show you, but stay tuned for next Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. I will see you all then, bye. If you ever wonder what the aftermaths of one of my videos looks like, this is <laughs> pretty much it. Messy, messy, messy. So much yarn everywhere.